A very good afternoon to everyone. Uh, today I'm going to deal with a unique file root locus and the part one and the lecture number 38. My Guru Naik Naik. So let us start with the content. So before starting with the root locus, let us understand the meaning of locus. A brief revision. What is meant by locus? In the next part that we had dealt in the previous first and second units the term k gain so let us understand the importance of that in the third one necessity of studying the root locus then theoretical approach for the root locus and what is its practical interpretation then procedure for rapid clothing of root locus then let us consider some case examples and a case study. <clears throat> so to start with <clears throat> the meaning of locus, its basic geometry say that the equation y of x equal to x in which x is an independent variable and y is a dependent variable dependent on x represents a locus given by this brown color line and that we call as the locus of equation y equal to x in x y plane so the brown color line actually represents the locus of an equation y of x equal to x or y equal to x in the next part the importance of gain term k system gain k we look at the block diagram shown in figure 1 represents the k term which is represented in series with a system so almost all the practical system will have their output dependent on the gain k so it is represented as a separate term k and the system if it is represented by g in the forward path transfer function is given by k into g and the feedback path represents the measurements by sensors or any actuators so basically k represents a proportional value or the relationship between the magnitude of the input to the magnitude of the output signal at steady state you should remember this Many system contains a method by which gain can be altered either automatically or manually as an example of amplifier in which we decide the gain by designing the RC parameters. Then <coughs> increasing the gain or decreasing the gain beyond a particular value can cause the system to become unstable. This is a very important point we should keep in mind. So in the root logs chapter actually we are studying how this dependency can be uh, represented in a mathematical form <clears throat> so let us start with a key part the necessity to study the root locus so let us consider some practical example or the four cases of a bike riding that is consider the first case at a speed of zero kilometer per hour Second case at 50 km per hour and at a speed of 150 km per hour. In the last case, fourth case, at a speed of infinite km per hour. So let us put these questions in our mind. In which case the bike is usually controllable? In which case it is actually difficult to control? And in which case it is not possible to control at all? The answers can be. <coughs> The bike may be easily controllable at 50 km per hour or 150 km per hour and it is difficult to control at 0 km per hour and it is not at all possible to control infinite km per hour. So what I mean to say control is the bike should stand only on the two wheels without any support. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. So let us highlight the two cases second and third 0 km per hour is difficult to control and infinite km per hour is 
not possible to control. <clears throat> so how to ensure the stability of system without performing the practical experiment? So we cannot run the bike at say infinite kilometer per hour to check its stability or the possibility of control. So therefore, to overcome this challenge, we need to go for a systematic study known as root locus method. So root locus is a theoretical analysis before the practical approach. <clears throat> so theoretical approach and practical interpretation. The definition of root locus goes as follows. It's a graphical plot in its plane representing the locus of characteristic roots with a variation in system gain k. For example, let the plant transfer function g is given by k into s plus 2 into s divided by s plus 3 with a feedback being unity. <coughs> the characteristic equation is 1 plus dh equal to 0. Therefore, for the present example, what we get is s equal to minus 2k minus 3 divided by k plus 1. So please highlight the graphical plot in s plane representing locus of characteristic roots with a system gain k is the definition of root locus. Therefore, we need to frame the characteristic equation as the characteristic root expressed in terms of the system gain k. So these are, this is the characteristic equation and the roots of this equation are called as the characteristic roots. When we don't consider k or k as 1, then the characteristic roots will be <coughs> finite. But when we consider the variable k, for different values of k from 0 to infinity, we will have different characteristic roots. Okay. So therefore, <coughs> expressing the characteristic equation, characteristic roots in terms of k will help us to obtain the graphical plot or root locus. So k is independent variable and the characteristic root of the system is obviously dependent on the system gain k. <coughs> so let us begin to calculate the characteristic root value for each and every k. So in this table, let us consider the values of k from 0 to infinity and accordingly let us calculate the values of s. So before that let us represent the roots and uh, poles and zeros of the system. So as earlier we discussed the transfer function is k into s plus 2 divided by s plus 3 where minus 2 forms is 0 minus 3 is the pole of the system. So now to calculate the characteristic root, look at this table. When k is equal to 0, the value of s from the previous relation, when k is 0, the value of s will be minus 3. So that represents that as follows. So similarly, use the previous relation. For k equal to 1, we get s equal to minus 5. <coughs> for k equal to 2, we get uh, for k equal to 1, we get minus 2.5, and that can be represented less plane as follows. Similarly, when s equal to 2 to infinity, the values of s changes as follows. And the same can be plotted in the s plane as follows. This is one of the examples. Let us consider the second example in which we have taken a right half zero and a left half pole of the g of s again the feedback being unity we obtain the characteristic equation and the relation of s in terms of k is as follows so now change the value of k again and check the value of s which is nothing but the characteristic group so at particular value of k the s changes from negative to positive. So let us plot this in s plane. So 
So the root locus moves like this. Okay, and at k equal to 1.5, the characteristic root will have s will have the value 0 that is represented here. So again highlighting the root locus or the roots changes from k equal to 0 to infinity as shown. <coughs> so now we can write or we can say that the root will move in the direction shown here as k varies from 0 to infinity. So the characteristic root from moves from minus 3 to plus 2 as k changes from 0 to infinity. <coughs> so this is now called as root locus of the system. So what we observe from the previous case is in case 1.5 system is completely stable. In case 1.5 system is critically stable because the root lies at on the imaginary axis. And when k is greater than 1.5, the characteristic root moves to the right half of the system. Yes, please. Therefore, system is unstable. Therefore, it is very important to know the range of k for which the system is stable. And if the system is operated beyond the safe limits of k, the system reaches the state of instability. And one more key point, the root locus always starts from the pole and ends at 0. So I have given many examples for the better understanding. So these are some simple examples. You can look at the direction of root locus, how it moves. So thank you.